What's up, everybody? My name is Tim Rosswick, and today I want to talk about why you should stop trying to learn everything. So this is something I did when I was younger. Uh, I would I would want to make a game, right, or anything with software or anything that I really wanted to learn. Um, I would come across a bunch of subjects and I'd be like, oh, I want to I want to learn that. So I jumped into coding. I learned coding. Realized I needed some GUI experience, so I jumped into GUI. Uh, started learning different graphic, graphical stuff on how to build different user interfaces and stuff. That was cool. I realized I needed um, backend software support for internet maintenance and stuff like that on my software so that I could update it from, from uh, you know, the internet. So I could push out an update and it would automatically update on people's computers. So I learned a bunch of stuff. I learned that. Uh, I got into game dev, right? I started making games. Then I had to learn art. I started learning that. Uh, I learned uh, music. I learned a bunch of music stuff, right? And I just, I kept trying to learn everything. And the, the problem with trying to learn everything is that y you don't get very good at what you're trying to learn, right? There are advantages to learning a bunch of stuff. And definitely I've seen the advantages of being a jack of all trades like I am. Uh, for, for one, it makes me very good at hiring people because I know a little bit about everything. So when I hire somebody for a skill, I've probably done that at some point. So I know what to look for. But the downside is I haven't gotten very super great at any one thing, right? I haven't become like a super expert at programming. I haven't become a super uh, amazing artist. I haven't, I haven't really gotten fantastic at any one thing. And I think that uh, everybody has natural talents and skills, right? And I think that people should focus on building up their talents and skills rather than evening out their negatives. I think it's it's a fantastic opportunity for people that have a very clear understanding of what they're good at. And not everybody has a clear understanding of what they're good at, and we'll get to that in a second. But if you have it, if you know what you're good at, I think you should stop trying to round out your corners, right? And and figure out all the stuff that you you may not be good at, because most of the time it's a better use of your time and your energy to just do what you're good at, make money with what you're good at, and then pay someone to do the stuff that you're not good at. I learned that the hard way, right? So when I started my uh, marketing business, we actually started, I started doing web design. That's how it started. I learned, I learned how to make websites and stuff. Uh, then I had to learn, like I had to learn HTML. I had to learn CSS. Then I had to learn PHP. And then I learned SEO. And then I learned a bunch of stuff. And it just kind of spiraled into marketing because that's kind of how um, the business went, but what I realized so many different l years later after building that company up was that I could have progressed faster if I stopped myself from being the bottleneck. So for example, any service that we offered in my company, I had to learn how to do. And that took a long time. And guess what? When I started, I wasn't good at it. So I didn't feel comfortable charging with people. So I had to practice and then I would practice even more. And then I would, then, then we'd finally get clients on it. And by then it sometimes it could be six months or a year into the actual subject uh, of me learning when I could have just hired somebody to do it. And it doesn't necessarily mean you need to bring on an employee, right? Like I could have contracted someone. I could have got the client. Uh, this client wants SEO. Cool. Maybe I didn't know how to do SEO at the time. Uh, then I'll hire someone to do SEO for less than the client is paying me and everybody makes money, right? It works out well. Um, that's what I ended up doing later. And that's actually how I run my business now when I have people uh, contact me for freelance work. A lot of the stuff that I do, I don't even do myself. I contract out to people because I know what people are good at. I, I have the resources, I have the, the contacts and stuff. And I'm really good with dealing with clients. I'm really good with getting deals. Uh, people like to deal with me because they know that when they deal with me, they're going to get results. Like I'm going to keep the people on time. I'm going to keep their stuff on budget. We're going to make sure the stuff gets done. Right. And I'm, I'm, when I talk to them, I, I make sure that they always know what's going on. Now, some of the contractors I work with coincidentally are not good with people, right? They're not capable of landing the same clients that I am. And even if they were, they're not capable of keeping them at ease sometimes, right? Sometimes clients have worries or needs or whatever. Sometimes clients are a little anal about stuff. And uh, if they were to talk to some of my contractors, that would probably be a disaster. They might end up in a fight, right? But I've noticed what I'm good at, which is working with people, right? I, I tend to, it's ironic, really, being an introvert that I, I happen to be good at working with people. 
but I've focused on that skill and I've amplified it to a thousand fold, right? So right now you're watching this video on my YouTube channel. This is me projecting the thing that I'm good at working with people, sharing my knowledge with you on a larger scale, right? I understand what I'm good at. That's why I started a community. That's why I do what I do, right? Because I amplify the things that I'm good at and I stop trying to do the things that I'm bad at, right? Another perfect example is for my game file of phobia. Um, I'm in a position right now where I've been a solo developer for the last couple of years. I've made everything in the game myself. Um, but the music, the music is super important for the game and the music needs to be fantastic. And I am not at the level that I need to be to make the music to be fantastic for the game. And as a result, I know I need to hire somebody for that. I don't want to. I'd very much rather learn the music and do it all myself because um, I'm a perfectionist like that. But I know I need to do it. So at this point, I'm not trying to round off my corners and learn all the things that I don't know. I'm trying to focus on my strengths to actually get stuff done. And I've given you an example in my business. I've given you an example in um, my YouTube channel. And I've given you an example in my game. And it applies to like every different level of, of what you're doing. And I think the more that people focus on what they're good at, the more they can get done, right? And one of the best ways, if you're building a business, by the way, is to partner with someone that's good at the stuff you're not good at. Right? Or in a game dev, maybe you start a team with somebody that, you, that does what you're not good at. Rather than be the solo person in a, in a project, the project can move better rather than you trying to be a programmer and an artist, which takes two different skill sets. Uh, maybe you could just be the programmer and you could partner with an artist. Right? That way two people can make the same results uh, much faster. Twice as fast, sometimes three times as fast. It's a weird kind of rule when you get two people together and you get stuff three times as fast. Um, that's if they work well together, <laughs> obviously you've got other issues there, but it's just to summarize the point, like people just need to, I think they need to focus on what they're good at. As long as they know what they're good at, they need to focus. If they don't know what they're good at, I think you got to try a bunch of stuff and figure it out. Part of how I discovered what I was good at is trying a bunch of things, right? I tried every kind of web design imaginable. I tried a bunch of marketing stuff. I tried a bunch of software stuff. I tried game dev. I tried... Dude, I entered all kinds of businesses with various startups at the time. I, I've done all kinds of stuff. Like, I can't even think of all the stuff that I've done. So, like, uh, if you're not sure on what you're good at, you need to just experiment and, and find out what you're good at. Because there's going to be something that you have an interest in that you have a knack for. It's just going to happen. And if you know what you're good at, I think you need to double down and say, hey, I'm good at this. I'm going to do what I can and to double down in this effort and really learn and make myself the best I can be. And I think that's how you progress in life. So if you got any questions on this, any comments, please leave them down below. I would love to hear from you. Let's start a conversation as always. But once again, my name is Tim Russwick, and I will see you again tomorrow.